Good day class. In this video, we're going to discuss about evaluation of alternatives. So this is for your uh, module 6 on engineering economy. Now by the end of this module, first is you will be able to evaluate alternatives using equivalent work methods. So we have four equivalent work methods and we are going to discuss each of those methods. And then the last one is you will be able to evaluate alternatives using benefit cost analysis. Now let's start with the first one, the equivalent worth methods or EW. Now for this method, in order for us to evaluate a single project or multiple projects, what we need to do is we're going to convert all cash flows into equivalent present, future, or annual amounts at a given minimum attractive rate of return, or our MAR. By the way, our MAR is expressed in percent. So if a single project is under consideration, so first, for a single project or for a single alternative, if the equivalent worth method is greater than or equal to zero, so we're going to accept the project. Else, we're going to reject it. Now, if we are given with multiple projects, and then if we're going to select which one is the best, that is, which one is more economical, let's say, for example, or which one is the most, sorry, which one is the most economical. So therefore, this will be our basis. Before that, of course, um, for a certain problem, we are given with several alternatives. So given that we have project A, project B, and project C, and then if we found out that after some calculations, after we uh, uh, solve the the equivalent worth for each of the projects, so we're going to use this one. If the EW for project A is greater than the EW of B and also with C, provided that the equivalent worth method uh, talks about the net gain of the given project so therefore, we're going to select project A because for this condition, we can assure that project A can produce a net gain. That is a, an amount of money that is being generated out of the project. But, okay, so this is for net gain. That is we can earn money. However, if there is a case in which um, in selecting a project, if the given transaction are mostly cost or expenses, so our criteria would be EWA is less than EWB and is less than E. WC. So we have, we just, um, we just, uh, um, change the, uh, um, our inequality symbol from greater than to less than. So this one is applicable if the given transaction is cost or um, expenses. Of course, in selecting a project, we're going to select a project that will produce the very least cost or expenses. Now, for our equivalent worth method, we have three um, types. The first one is the future worth method, the next is present worth, and lastly, the annual worth worth method. Now for the future worth method, this is 
very important in order for us to maximize the future wealth of the owners of the firm. That is how much it's worth at the end of the given number of years. So how are we going to do this? So for this method, we're going to convert all cash flows into equivalent future amounts at a given minimum attractive rate of return. So for a single project, if the future worth is greater than or equal to zero, in which we consider that the positive transaction is for the earnings and the negative transaction on our cash flow diagram is for the costs. So if that is the case, then we are going to accept the project. That is, if the future worth is greater than zero or equal to zero, means that the project uh, will output a, uh, an earning instead of um, a cost or expenses or in net expenses. Now, if the uh, future worth is less than zero, now we're going to reject the project. Now, for multiple projects, given project A, B, and C, just use this, um, this criterion. Now, if ever uh, which one of this project will have a large value of its future worth, provided that the positive transaction is for the earnings and the negative transaction is for the cost. So, if this is true, then you're going to select project A. Now, for the present worth method, why, why do we need to use this method because it is a measure of how much fund will have to be put aside now since this is about the uh, uh, present period so we are concerned on how much fund will have to be put aside for this particular project so how are we going to perform this method so for this method we are going to convert all cash flows into equivalent present amounts at a given minimum attractive rate of return. So for a single project, if present worth is greater than or equal to zero, we're going to accept the project or that is the project is economically justified and otherwise we're going to reject it. For multiple projects, given projects A, B, and C, so we're going to use uh, this criterion. In selecting uh, which project is more economical now the last one is the annual worth method so for the annual worth method we are we are concerned on the um, net annual um, cash flow for a given project if the net annual cash flow is positive so therefore we can say that there is an earning so we're going to accept the project but if it is less than zero, so we're going to reject the project. Again, for this method, what you need to do is you're going to convert all cash flows into equivalent annual amounts at a given minimum attractive rate of return or at a given interest rate. Now, for multiple projects, same with the future and the present worth, just use this criterion in selecting the project. Okay, so let's have some problems. We have here problem number one. The initial investment of a certain machine is 25,000 pesos. The salvage value is 10% of the initial investment at the end of its useful life of 10 years. The annual revenue and expenses are 14,000 pesos and 10,000 pesos respectively. Now, the goal here is that we're going to evaluate the investment proposal by equivalent worth methods. We have the present worth, the annual worth, and the future worth methods at a given minimum attractive rate of return of 10%. Now for this problem, we're going to consider also the effect of depreciation. Now to answer this problem, first is you need to write the given parameters. So let's start with the 25,000 pesos. That would be our 
initial investment or let's just uh, denote this as our uh, first cost that is equal to 25,000 pesos and then our salvage value that is 10% of the initial investment so that would be 0.1 of the first cost next we have an annual revenue an annual revenue equal to 14,000 pesos and we also have an annual expenses equal to 10,000 and we have a given minimum attractive rate of return or our interest rate for this problem that is 10 percent or equal to 0.1 in decimal now after writing all the uh, given parameters the next step is that we are going to construct a cash flow diagram for this particular uh, problem so for our cash flow diagram we are going to um, let all the transactions positive if it uh, goes upward or if it earns money but if it does not earn money let's say if um, this one is a cost or expenses so therefore we are going to point that one downward now initially so we have our first cost so it will the, the direction of the arrow is downward because this is a part of the cost so in the upward direction this is for the uh, earning so we have here 25k and then um the useful life so by the way i forget to include the useful life in our given so that is 10 years so that's one two three four that 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 until the 10th year so 25k now on a yearly basis or uh, per year we have an annual revenue so revenue is part of the earning so the AR points upward and our annual expenses points downward and this one is constant up to the useful life okay so we have here AR and then I and then on the 10th year so we have annual expenses and an annual revenue and please do not forget the given interest rate or the given mar that is equal to 0.1 now we still have um, another cost that is present in the problem and that is the uh, depreciation cost now since we have a given interest rate so we're going to use the sinking fund formula in calculating the yearly depreciation okay so on a basis we have an annual depreciation equal to d and then to solve for d we're going to use the sinking fund formula so this is our annual depreciation of our given machine so since this is a machine so over time um, of course its structural integrity will also decrease as well as its performance so therefore um, its uh, book value or trade value will also decrease because of the uh, effect of depreciation now AR and AE 
are both given, but our D or our annual depreciation is not yet given. So therefore, we're going to solve this one. We're going to solve first the annual depreciation. Annual depreciation D. Now for the annual depreciation using using a sinking fund formula. We have the annual depreciation equal to the uh, first cost multiplied by the salvage value times the given I over 1 plus I raised to N minus 1. Or um, since uh, we are talking on the uh, useful life, so our N should be replaced with L. Okay, so plugging in the values, our uh, first cost is 25,000. Minus the salvage value is 10% of 25,000, so that's 0.1 times 25,000. But be mindful, we need to put a brace here because we're going to multiply this entire thing with the i. So the i here is 10% um, divided by 1 plus 0 0.1 raised to 10 minus 1. Okay. So our annual depreciation is equal to, okay, so our annual depreciation is approximately equal to uh, 1,411.77. And now, uh, we have just completed all the given expenses or costs in the problem. So the next step is we're going to evaluate uh, this proposal in terms of the present worth method, the annual worth method, and lastly, the future worth method. So let's start with the present worth method. Okay, for the present worth method, that is equal to, if we try to look at our cash flow diagram so we have our first cost so first cost plus now we have here a series of um, payments that are uniform across the uh, useful life so we have ar and ae so we can model this one as an ordinary annuity so for an ordinary annuity to solve for its present worth, simply we are going to um, we're going to subtract the uh, revenue minus the expenses, and then multiplied by I all over and so sorry, not I but divided by I. Not multiplied by I but divided by I. Then you have 1 minus 1 plus i raised to negative l. And then finally, okay, I forget to add the uh, depreciation, the annual depreciation. So we're going to insert it right here. Okay, so we have minus uh, i minus d okay and then finally um, our salvage value finally our salvage value so that is um, plus our salvage value multiplied no not multiplied but divided by um, 1 plus i raised to l. 
By the way, our first cost since this is a type of cost. So the uh, sign here is negative. Okay? Because as what I have told you, right here in this slide for earnings, we assign a positive value. And for the um, for the cost, we're going to assign a negative value. Okay, next step is we're going to plug in the values. So we have negative 25,000 plus the difference of the annual revenue, that is 14,000 minus the expenses equal to 10K. And then the annual depreciation is 1411.77 all over the given mark that is 10 percent then you have one minus one plus i raised to negative 10 so therefore our present worth method is equal to that is equal to negative 9096 point 45 now from the given value we found out that the present worth um, value is less than zero so therefore for the present worth method we're going to reject the investment now let us see if we can still arrive this um we can still arrive the same um judgment if we try the remaining two methods okay so for number two we have the annual worth method for the annual word is equal to the uh, equivalent annual worth of our first cost so that would be first cost times i all over uh, 1 minus 1 plus i raised to um, negative l next is the uh, difference of the revenue and all the expenses so we have a r minus a sub e minus the depreciation and finally, again, this one is negative because this is a cost. Finally, plus the salvage value. So for our salvage value, we're going to get its equivalent annual uh, value. So we have salvage value multiplied by i all over 1 plus i raised to l minus 1. Next is we're going to substitute the values. So this one is negative 25k times 0 0.1 all over 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.1 raised to negative 10 plus 14,000 minus 10,000 minus 1477.11. 1411 sorry <laughs> one four that's this should be one four one 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 four one one point seventy seven plus now our salvage value is expressed in terms of the uh, initial investment in percent so we have point one times twenty five k and then into multiple interest rate equal to 10% all over 1 plus 0.1 raised to 10 minus 1. Okay, so our annual worth our annual worth is equal to, so that is equal to negative 1323.54. So our judgment here, since the uh, annual worth value is less than zero, so we're going to reject the investment. Okay.
Okay, so lastly, we will proceed to the uh, future worth method. So for this method, fw is equal to the uh, future worth of our first cost. So that would be first cost multiplied by 1 plus i raised to l plus the equivalent future worth of the uh, annual transactions so we have here ar minus am minus the uh, the annual depreciation Okay, that would be minus d over i then multiplied by 1 plus i raised to l minus 1 and then plus oh sorry again i always forget this one since this is a cost so that, that this one's minus then plus now this one talks about the um net uh, flow of money then plus the salvage value so what do we need to add the salvage value because uh, salvage value talks about the uh, price of a certain device price of a certain device after it has reached its useful life okay so you can gain out of that now we have salvage value and that's it because the salvage value is located in the in future uh, period next is we're going to substitute some values so negative 25,000 then 1 plus 0.1 raised to 10 plus the revenue is 14,000 minus 10,000 minus 1411.77 over 0.1 times 1 plus 0.1 raised to 10 minus 1 plus the salvage value is 10 percent so that's 0 0.1 times 25,000 okay so we're going to calculate this now our future worth Approximately equal to negative two three five nine three point eighty four. So since the uh, since um in our criterion, if the uh, faculty, I'm not the faculty, but sorry, but future worth method is less than zero so we are going to uh, reject the investment so since this is true so therefore we are going to reject the investment okay so that's it this is how you're going to evaluate a single investment using the three methods present worth annual worth and future worth next is we're going to consider this second example so we have a gasoline driven pump and an electric power pump are being considered for use in a mine for a period of 10 years so the data are available in the table so we have here two alternatives the gasoline and the electric driven pump and uh, we have the first cost for each alternatives life in years salvage value annual operating cost annual repairs and annual uh, taxes so the question is if money is worth 12 percent compounded annually so which would you recommend on the basis of annual costs now since it talks about the annual costs so our criteria uh, criterion or criteria will be changed 
that is uh, uh, whichever of these two um, alternative that has the uh, least annual cost so that would be the economical choice so we're going to select that one okay so uh, let's solve this on the next slide now uh, i will not write the uh, given values anymore because it was already um, covered or it was already placed inside this table so next is we're going to focus on the requirement for this problem that is we're going to um, recommend on which of these two is available or is suitable for such an operation okay so requirement is for uh, recommendation recommendation for for an economical uh, driven pump okay solution so let's start by evaluating the first alternative which is the gasoline driven pump okay so for the uh, gasoline driven pump we're going to uh, consider all the costs now since we have a first cost and a salvage value and a given interest rate so expect a depreciation cost by using the sinking fund formula okay so for the gasoline driven pump let's start by solving the depreciation the so the depreciation d is equal to again a formula that is the First cost minus salvage value all over. I'm oh sorry, this is this will be multiplied by the given i. Then you have 1 plus i, which is a negative l minus 1. Okay, so for the gasoline driven pump, the first cost is 12,000 minus the salvage value is 1,000. Then our um, interest rate is 12%. So that's 0 0.12 over 1 plus 0.12 raised to negative. For the useful life of the gasoline driven pump is only 5 years. So minus 5 minus 1. So the annual depreciation is equal to. 1,731.52 now by the way regarding with the uh, formula for the depreciation using single fund formula this one is not negative but rather positive okay so we now have the depreciation so we're now ready to calculate the total annual costs so the annual cost uh, total this is for gasoline is equal to we have the annual uh, operating cost then we also have plus the annual repair and we also have an annual taxes so plus annual annual taxes and of course the uh, the depreciation plus the annual 
um, depreciation. Okay, and aside from that, since we are um, concerned with the annual costs, we're going to um, add also the minimum required um, profit. Okay, so plus the uh, minimum required profit. Not project, I mean, not this one, but uh, profit. Okay, the annual operating cost is, um, the annual operating cost is 3,200 plus the uh, annual repair. Of 600 pesos and then the next is the annual taxes that's 0 0.03 for the tax rate times the fixed uh, first cost that's 0 0.03 times the uh, times the uh, first cost then plus a depreciation of 171.52 okay and then plus the minimum required profit so the minimum required profit is simply the uh, given this rate times the first cost so we have 0 0.12 times 12,000 okay so we're going to add this we can come up a result for the uh, total annual cost we're going to use the gasoline driven pump so the answer here the uh, total annual cost for gasoline is equal to 7,000 331.52 pesos. Now the next one is for the uh, the uh, total annual cost for the second alternative which is an electric driven pump. Okay, so that is um, electric. Okay, so this is for the electric pump okay so we have AO plus AR plus AT plus the depreciation then plus the minimum required profit okay so we're going to plug in the values for the annual operate Operating cost of the electric we only have one thousand eight hundred plus the annual repairs is equal to four hundred plus the annual taxes is three percent to zero point zero three times the first cost that is twelve twelve thousand. Next is the depreciation that is plus one seven three one point fifty two, and then lastly, okay, so that's that's plus plus zero point twelve times. Uh, the uh, first cost of our um, gasoline driven pump I don't know no, but like the power pump uh, by the way um, this is not the uh, correct solution for uh, getting the 
total annual uh, cost for the electric power pump is because the value that we used for its depreciation is not the same with the gasoline driven pump so i will going to erase this one and then let's start with the uh, uh, calculation again for electric uh, power pump okay so our next step or the first step for the uh, electric driven pump is to solve for its depreciation so solving for the depreciation of our electric electric uh, power pump okay so uh, the formula for our annual depreciation is d is equal to the first cost of the electric pump minus its salvage value multiplied by i all over 1 plus i raised to l minus 1. Next is we're going to substitute uh, the values for each of the parameters in this formula. Now the first cost for electric power pump is 25,000 minus uh, its salvage value of 2,000 pesos multiplied by <coughs> the interest rate of 12% all over 1 plus 0 0.12 raised to the useful life for electric power pump that is uh, 10 years so raised to 10 minus 1 okay so the uh, <coughs> annual depreciation cost for electric power pump is there is uh, approximately equal to 1310.64 okay so next is we're going to add all the uh, annual costs for the electric power pump in order to uh, determine okay is to determine the total annual cost for our electric power pump so the total annual cost for electric power pump so we have 80 is equal to the annual depreciation plus the annual operating cost plus the annual repairs then plus the annual taxes which is expressed as a percentage of the uh, first cost and then plus the uh, minimum minimum required minimum required uh, profit okay so for the electric power plant i mean power pump the annual depreciation is again 1310.64 plus the annual operating cost of um, 1800 plus the annual repairs equal to 750 pesos plus the uh, annual taxes that is 3% of the first cost so we have 0 0.03 multiplied by the first cost which is 25,000 pesos plus the minimum required profit that is a percentage of the interest rate I mean a percentage of the first cost based on the interest rate that's 12% so 0 0.12 multiplied by thousand pesos therefore the uh, annual total cost for electric power pump is uh, by the way our annual repairs is not um, 750 pesos but 
that is um, 400 pesos so therefore our annual total cost is equal to 7260.64 now if we're going to compare the um, the two alternatives so going back to the previous slide for the gasoline we have 7331.52 so a total for the uh, gasoline is equal to uh, 7331.52 which is greater than with the uh, total annual cost for the electric uh, power pump which is 7260.64 so therefore due to the uh, lower annual cost for the electric uh, power pump so we're going to uh, recommend this um, alternative so recommend electric power pump due to its lower annual cost lower annual total cost okay so that's it next is we'll proceed to the benefit cost analysis now benefit cost analysis is very um, important it's because um, we can determine how much um, benefit can we um, can we uh, gather from a given um, investment or from a given project so in order to quantify this one it is simply the ratio of the uh, benefit that we can acquire from a project over the cost that we um, that we utilized in realizing or in implementing this project now uh, how can we tell whether a certain project should be undertaken now we can only um, assume or we can only assure that we're going to um, accept this project if it's its benefit to cost ratio which is b over c is greater than or equal to one now this is the formula for the benefit cost analysis so b over c is equal to the difference of the uh, benefits and the disbenefits all over the uh, cost that is being acquired by the project or alternative now in some problems they consider especially for private companies they consider the uh, operation and maintenance costs as these benefits but for public projects or investment um, they add the operation and maintenance costs with the uh, cost in the denominator okay so please take note with this one if it is for private um, private projects or investment the operation maintenance costs will be add up to the uh, this benefits d but for government public projects or investments you're going to combine this with the uh, cost acquired by the project which is located in the denominator okay so let's proceed to some sample problems now let's start with problem number one <clears throat> so the u.s parks and wildlife service is considering providing public access to a previously inaccessible portion of carlsbad caverns the cost of the project is expected to be 1.8 million with maintenance expected to cost 
$60,000 per year. However, increased tourism is expected to generate additional income of $250,000 per year to local businesses. So the goal here is calculate the benefit to cost ratio for the permanent project using an interest rate of 8% per year. So the first thing that you should uh, consider is that um, what type of project that is being uh, that is being um, being said in this problem. So if we're going to analyze this one, this is all about um, the U.S. Parks and Wildlife Service that provides uh, public access to a previously inaccessible portion of Carlsbad Caverns. So this, therefore, this is a uh, public or government project or investment. So therefore, the uh, if ever uh, there is a maintenance and, op and operational cost, so we are going to combine this with the uh, total cost, not with the uh, benefits. Okay, so given we have the uh, the uh, initial cost, or we're going to let this as the first cost that is equal to one million eight hundred thousand dollars. Next is we have a maintenance cost of sixty thousand dollars per year. Okay, so we have our MC maintenance cost of sixty thousand dollars per year, and then with the increase in tourism, uh, this project is expected to generate an additional income of two hundred fifty thousand dollars per year. So we have an income of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That is on a yearly basis. And then we also have a given interest rate of 8% or that's 0 0.08 so required we're going to solve for the benefit cost ratio so solution <coughs> first is we're going to construct a cash flow diagram since we're dealing with um, several transactions so from 0 one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. Now the initial period, of course, uh, it has a uh, first cost or initial investment of one million eight hundred thousand dollars. Next is on a yearly basis, it has a maintenance cost. So we're going to um, put this in the downward arrow because this is a cost. And for the income going to put this in the upward arrow okay so we have i and then maintenance cost so on and so forth now our i here is equal to 0 0.08 now in order for us to have a consistent unit for our or for each of our parameters and especially if we're going to use the formula so we need to be consistent with it because the formula for the benefit cost ratio is concerned with the benefits of the project minus that is benefits of the project over the total cost. So you need to remember this one. If the cost that is being acquired by the project is on a yearly basis, make sure that the, this, uh, that the benefits B should also be expressed on a yearly basis as well as that is benefits should also be expressed in terms of or on a yearly basis now if the cost is per month make sure that both b and d should be expressed on a monthly basis or per month if it is semi-annual so the cost should be semi-annual as well as the uh, uh, benefits b and that is benefits d okay now what is our benefit here? So our benefit here is our um, income, which is our I. Now, do we have uh, these benefits? 
so we don't have this benefits here because it is it, it is not stated also in the problem but we have a cost so our cost is a combination of the uh, uh, maintenance cost yearly maintenance cost and the uh, first cost okay so our benefit is equal to the income i and then our cost annual cost is the sum of the maintenance cost plus okay plus the uh, um plus the uh, equivalent annual maintenance cost of our first cost so uh, we are going to solve for the equivalent annual uh, cost for our first cost so we're going to put here a equivalent for our first cost okay so in other words we're going to convert this trans uh, transaction our first cost into its equivalent annual costs okay so we're going to um do that in the next slide so we have benefit over cost is equal to i all over the maintenance cost plus the uh, equivalent annual cost for our first cost so how are we going to solve for this one okay so we're going to solve first the equivalent annual cost for our first cost so solving for solving for a equivalent of our first cost now we're going to um, focus on its uh, CFD this is our first cost so we want to know its um, equivalent annual cost but since the uh, number of periods or the number of years is not given so we're going to assume an infinite uh, period so for a perpetual um, annuity so we call that one as perpetuity so therefore the formula is that the first cost is simply equal to the annual equivalent cost all over i so this is the formula for a uh, perpetuity so to solve for a equivalent to simply a equivalent of the first cost is equal to i times the first cost now we're going to apply this to our uh, formula so we have benefit cost ratio is equal to the income all over the maintenance cost plus i times the first cost okay so substituting the uh, values our i is equal to two hundred fifty thousand dollars the maintenance cost is sixty thousand dollars per year again our income here is on a yearly basis our maintenance cost in a, is on a yearly basis as well and lastly our i times fc is also expressed on a yearly basis okay so here this is plus 0 0.08 multiplied by the first cost that is one million eight hundred thousand dollars okay so if you're going to calculate this one the benefit cost ratio is approximately equal to 1.23 which is greater than um, zero so therefore we are going to um, consider consider the project or investment okay so that's it but again uh, the uh, only requirement for this problem is just to solve for the value uh, the value of the benefit costs but if ever the problem requires you to to tell whether to consider the project or not so of course you need to include also this one okay by the way uh, i have some correction regarding with our final answer 
So the uh, benefit cost ratio is approximately equal to 1.23 and if ever this value is greater than or equal to zero so we're going to consider the project or investment but it is obvious that 1.23 is uh, greater than zero the mistake here is that um, this one should be equal to one okay so this one should should be equal to one not zero okay so benefit to cost ratio is approximately equal to 1.23 which is also greater than one so if this is the case then we're going to consider the project or the investment now let's proceed to our final problem so we're going to determine which of the four alternatives shown below should be selected on the basis of a benefit cost analysis using an interest rate of 10 percent per year so we have here our table showing the uh, different costs we have the first cost in terms of uh, the peso currency annual maintenance and operational cost benefits this benefits and the useful life for each of these alternatives so we have uh, alternative w x y and z now if we have a uh, multiple alternatives uh, in order for us to determine which of these four alternatives is economical in terms of their cost and their benefits and by using this benefit cost analysis so you you're going to follow these two important steps the first one is you're going to rank the given alternatives the given alternatives that is from a list initial investment cost or this is also known as the first cost to greatest to greatest uh, initial investment investment cost including including the do nothing we're going to represent this one as dn do nothing means that um this will be our first reference in which the uh, values for our do nothing are all zero it means that the first cost is zero, the annual maintenance and operational cost is zero, the benefits as well as that, these benefits are all zero. So I guess it would be better if we're going to add a column before the uh, alternative W. So this would be our DN. All the values are zero. Okay. So um, for our first step, we're going to uh, look at the first cost of each of these four alternatives so the list uh, initial investment cost is alternative z but of course we're going to start with the do nothing so do nothing followed by the uh, uh, alternative z which has a first cost of one million two hundred thousand pesos followed by the alternative x next is <clears throat> alternative w and lastly we have the alternative y okay so the next step is we are going to compare the two uh, successive alternatives on an incremental basis so compare 
the two successive um, alternatives alternatives on an incremental basis so what do you mean by this one uh, let's say we're going to pick um, the two successive alternatives z and x so z to x so z has the list or z has a lesser initial investment cost than alternative x so our formula would be benefit to cost ratio between z and x is equal to the change in the benefits minus the change in the disk benefits over the change in cost now we're going to expand this one so the change in the benefits so since z has a lesser cost so the formula would be uh, bx minus bz so not bz minus bx but bx minus bz minus dx minus dz or in short or in other words um, you're going to write first the uh, the alternative that has the uh, greater initial investment cost minus the lesser uh, initial investment cost so in our denominator we have cx minus cz now if ever the result here is greater than one now we're going to reject we're going to reject the alternative x so just follow this formula and of course this uh, two steps okay so let's start with first one is that we're going to compare uh, the uh, do nothing and the z so do nothing versus the alternative z now first is we're going to um of course we're going to write the formula benefit cost for do nothing to z is equal to the uh, um benefit for z minus the benefit for do nothing minus the bit of uh, the, this benefit sorry we're going to erase this one uh, this benefits for b uh, for z minus the benefit for do nothing all over the cost for z minus the cost for do nothing now since all the values for the uh, do nothing are all zero so this one becomes zero this one becomes zero as well as this one now from the given we already have values for our benefits and these benefits for our alternative z but we don't know yet the uh, annual cost for our uh, alternative z so we're going to solve for c z so the total annual cost for alternative z is equal to the sum of the annual maintenance and operational cost for z plus the uh, equivalent annual cost for our first cost so that would be first cost multiplied by i all over 1 minus 1 plus i raised to um, negative L so the annual main maintenance operational cost for Z we have 80,000 pesos plus the first cost 1 million 200,000 multiplied by I which is 10% all over 1 minus 1 plus 0.1 raised to negative 20 So the answer is approximately equal to 
220,951.55 okay so substituting this one to our uh, formula so benefit cost ratio between uh, do nothing and alternative z is equal to the uh, benefits for z that is equal to 250,000 pesos minus its this benefit that is 20,000 pesos all over its uh, annual cost of 220,951.55 so the benefit cost ratio is approximately equal to this is 1.04 which is greater than 1. So therefore, we are going to reject the lesser initial investment. So we're going to reject the uh, do nothing. Okay. So next is we are going to compare Z with the next uh, alternative on the list. So that is Z versus x so the formula would be uh, benefit over cost between z and x is equal to the benefit of x minus benefit of z minus this benefits of x minus this benefit of z all over the cost of x minus the cost for z now we already solved for the uh, annual cost for z so um, the first step is to solve first the initial cost i mean the uh, annual cost for our alternative x solve for cx so the annual cost for our alternative x is equal to its uh, annual maintenance and operational cost plus uh, the equivalent annual cost for its first cost. So first cost x divided by i. And then you have 1 minus 1 plus i raised to negative <coughs> l. So the annual maintenance and operational cost for x that is um, 60,000 pesos plus its first cost is 1,500,000 pesos multiplied by i all over 1 minus 1 plus 0.1 raised to negative 20 so the uh, annual cost for x that is equal to 236,189.44 next uh, we're going to substitute the values so benefit cost ratio between z and x is equal to uh, the benefit for x is equal to 260,000 minus the benefit for z that is 250,000 minus the this benefits for x that is 15,000 pesos minus for z that is 20,000 pesos all over the annual cost for X that is 236,189.44 minus the annual cost for uh, Z. We already solved that one in the previous slide that so we have 220,951.55. So 220,951.55. 55 okay so the uh, benefit cost ratio between z and x is equal to 0 0.9844 which is less than 1 so therefore we're going to reject the uh, alternative x so z will still remain okay so next is 
we're going to compare z with uh, alternative w so number three z versus w so benefit cost of z to w is equal to benefit z i don't know benefit w minus benefit of z then minus uh, this benefit of w minus this benefit of z all over the cost of w minus cost of z now the next step is to solve for <coughs> the annual cost of alternative w so solve for cw that is uh, cw equals the annual operation and maintenance cost plus the equivalent annual cost for its first cost so first cost of w multiplied by by the interest rate i all over 1 minus 1 plus i raised to negative l so for alternative w we have 50,000 pesos plus the first cost is 1,600,000 pesos times the interest rate of 10% then 1 minus 1 1 plus 0 0.1 raised to negative 20 so therefore the annual uh, cost for alternative w is is equal to 237,935.40 so next is we're going to substitute the values so we have uh, for w the benefit for w is 269,000 minus the z that is 250,000 then minus the uh, this benefit for w that is equal to 13,000 minus the this benefit for z that is 20,000 all over the cost for w that is 237,935.40 minus the uh, cost the annual cost for z so in this slide that is equal to 220.951.55 so 220.951.55 so the benefit cost ratio between z and w approximately equal to 1.531 which is greater than 1 so therefore z will be rejected or z is rejected so next okay and lastly we're going to uh, compare since z is already rejected so it was replaced by alternative w so on the last comparison uh, it is between w and um, y w and y so the formula benefit cost ratio between w and y is equal to the benefits for y minus benefits for w minus this benefits for y minus this benefit for w all over cost annual cost of y minus annual cost of the alternative w and then again we're going to solve first the annual cost for our alternative y so solve for cy now cy is equal to the annual maintenance and operational cost plus the equivalent annual cost for its first cost so 1 minus 1 plus i raised to negative l so the annual maintenance and operational cost for alternative y is 35,000 pesos plus 
plus its first cost is 1 million 900,000 multiplied by the interest rate then all over 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.1 raised to negative 20 so therefore the annual uh, cost for alternative y is approximately equal to 200 258,173.29 next we're going to substitute these values so benefit cost ratio for w and y is equal to so the benefits for y is equal to um, 282,000 pesos minus for w that is um, 269,000 pesos minus the difference of their these benefits so for y that is 22,000 pesos minus for w that's 13,000 pesos all over the uh, annual cost for y that is 258,173.29 minus the annual cost for w so in this slide that is equal to 237,935.40 so 237,935.40 40 okay so therefore the benefit to cost ratio between w and y is approximately equal to 0 0.1976 which is less than 1 so therefore we will not uh, accept y but we're going to reject it we're going to reject y instead of w so therefore, from the series of uh, comparison between two successive alternatives, we found out that the alternative W uh, stand out among the four alternatives. So therefore, we're going to therefore select the alternative w okay so that's it this is how you're going to uh, select an alternative using benefit cost analysis so that would be all thank you